Hi Snail Movie here, today I'll show you a series Ultimate Survivor. It tells young man from Japan is trapped in a cycle of mediocrity, with no achievements to his name, yet constantly yearning for overnight riches. He repeatedly indulges in high-stakes gambling games. What will be his ultimate fate? Spoiler ahead. Watch out and take care. 10,000 meters above in the sky, thrill seekers embark on a heart-pounding game. Winners earn 1 billion while losers fall into the abyss. Yet this life and death game is merely an entertainment for the wealthy, whereas the destitute outside suffer brutal falls. The wealthy insiders revel in laughter. As the game begins, the organizer electrifies the steel. Players must tread only with their shoes on. Smart Peter draws a line on his shoes, aligning it with the road to prevent deviation. Others follow suit. But suddenly, the sky crackles with thunder and lightning. The impending rain is coming. Impatient player one takes a few hurried steps, only to fall after encountering the rail. Panic sets in among the rest. One person is jolted and collapses from the electrifying shock. Someone attempts to turn back, accidentally dragging others down with him. Soon enough, rain begins to pour, leaving only three players remaining. Player number three forcefully thumps his own thigh, taking one step at a time, edging forward. Encouraged by him, Peter musters up his courage. Yet the old man behind him can no longer hold on. He gives a 10 million check to Peter for his daughter. Peter agrees. Shortly after, the old man silently disappears. Peter and player number three support each other, and eventually, both reach the finish line. However, as player number three opens the window, the contrasting air pressures create a gust of wind, blowing him off the edge. Even at the final moment, a trap awaits. Despair engulfs Peter. But even more disheartening, Peter's 10 million prize money is nearly depleted by debts, and the old man's check proves to be invalid. The winnings of a deceased man are nothing more than an ordinary piece of paper. At that moment, the affluent tycoon in control decides to grant Peter another opportunity. The game begins. Each player is dealt five cards. On one side, there's one emperor and four citizens. On the other side, there's one slave and four citizens. Citizen against citizen results in a draw. Citizen defeats slave. Emperor defeats citizen. And slave defeats emperor. Therefore, the key to this game lies in the emperor and slave cards. The emperor card holds a significant advantage. But the slave card offers an astonishing 10 to 1 payout. To earn the 100 million, Peter has no choice but to take a gamble and choose the slave card. In the first round, both played citizens, and in the second round, they did the same. In the third round, Peter played the slave card, but his opponent saw through him and played a citizen. Peter lost. Man continued to mock him, claiming to possess mind-reading abilities and laughing arrogantly, before being taken away to become a laborer. Peter noticed something peculiar about the man's watch. As he walked, he reminisced, realizing the man's watch was actually a cheating device. Before the competition, the organizers had implanted a monitoring chip in him, and his opponent used the watch to monitor his heart rate and determine his moves. Peter excused himself to use the restroom, planning to borrow some money from the cadre escorting him. He had a highly successful strategy, where they would split the winnings 50-50. The woman immediately handed him a check for 50 million, and the billionaire agreed to let them have another round. Peter stood in front of the mirror and forcefully hit his head, causing himself to bleed profusely. All in pursuit of the 5 billion prize, sitting at the card table, he picked up a citizen card, intending to secretly switch the cards on the table. However, the host noticed his actions. Peter pretended to be outraged, condemning the wealthy elites who amassed fortunes at the expense of the poor. The blood from his wound dripped onto the cards. Due to his excessive excitement, the watch could no longer monitor his heart rate. Man was unable to cheat, leaving him no choice but to play it safe and start with a citizen card. As expected, the first round ended in a tie. In the second round, it was Peter's turn to play first. Man noticed the bloodstains on the card, indicating it was either a citizen or a slave. Man promptly played a citizen card, resulting in another tie. Man already knew the next card with bloodstains would definitely be the slave card. Once again, Peter pressed down the card stained with blood. At the last moment when Man was about to reveal his card, but he hesitated. He thinks Peter had previously wiped the blood with a towel and he must have noticed the traces left behind. He had also secretly switched the cards before. So, the bloodstained cards must be two citizens. Confident of victory. Man confidently played the emperor card, but, proudly, Peter said, it's because you don't miss any details that you will definitely notice I switched the cards before, but in reality, Peter had only pretended to switch the cards. He successfully anticipated man's anticipation. Behind the three iron gates, one's holding a beautiful princess, the other two got hungry lions. Press the button, gates open. If choose the right one, you'll win three million. If choose wrong, you'll be devoured by the lions. Man is dragged out, his legs shackled, but he's not worried at all because the woman in the cage is his wife. They love each other and are destined to win. The wife sees the correct number. After a moment of contemplation, she gives the answer. 
The man confidently presses the button. Unexpectedly, the other gate opens, releasing the lions. It turns out his wife betrayed him, all for the sake of pocketing three million. The man tries to escape but is devoured by the lion. Now it's Peter's turn. The princess in the cage turns out to be his ex-girlfriend Watson. She remains expressionless, merely telling him to choose number three. Sanbang. Peter hesitates. Can he trust her words? His old partner advises him not to trust her. Once a betrayer, always a betrayer. Peter is torn, not knowing how to decide. At that moment, a mysterious person reminds him. No matter when you gotta make a choice, you gotta be bold. No second guessing. It clicks for him. He clenches his teeth and presses gate number three. As the iron gate opens, Peter takes a relief. It seems this time the girl didn't deceive him. Little does he know. It's a part of the organizer's plan. They thought the girl had once betrayed them and Peter would never believe her again. Surprise Surprisingly, Peter chose correctly. At that moment, the mysterious person appears, wanting to join forces with Peter to unravel the second round designed by the organizers. This level is the most challenging but winning it means gaining 10 billion. This steel ball is worth 4,000 bucks. All it needs to do is navigate through a forest of nails, drop into one of the three-tiered discs below, and roll into the red hole on each level. If the player achieves that, they walk away with all. Currently, the ball has stacked up 10 levels. 1 billion for each level. 10 levels. 10 billion in total. This insane jackpot got everyone itching to give it a shot. This dude goes all in, emptying his pockets just to play this game. As the steel ball smoothly glides through two disc levels, success seems within reach. But in the end, he fails. This guy gets hooked on the game, craving for more. He goes and asks the organizers for a loan to keep playing, but he loses it all again. In the end, he's dragged down to the underground of the casino to work as a laborer. That's the wicked twist of this game. The organizers crafted it to rake in mad cash and exploit free labor like there's no tomorrow. Players are a dime a dozen, all hungry for the win, but constantly end up losing. Peter is playing a steel ball game. He effortlessly navigates the ball through the forest of nails, which drives the organizers crazy. They can't believe it's going so smoothly because they get three templates, A, B, and C. Each template's got different distances between them nails. Template A has got wider gaps, making it a cakewalk for the steel ball. But they didn't use template A. The organizers hurriedly stop Peter, claiming he snuck into the casino and switched the steel ball with a smaller one. And the evidence is in the hands of the girl. The organizers quickly bring out the template, ready to test it. But guess what? The steel ball ball fits perfectly. Girl shakes his head in disbelief. Turns out they fooled her. There was no switch with the steel ball. They swapped the templates instead. No worries, though the organizers have another plan. These three discs down here can be tilted under their control. After they adjust the tilt angle of the disc, the steel ball gets stuck in the pipe and can't roll out. It requires a bunch of steel balls as a cushion, but that means you gotta have a ton of money to buy them. Just when things get critical, the girl surprisingly pulls out all her savings to help Peter continue the game. She ain't down to be a puppet in the casino no more. Peter exchanges his remaining cash for a million worth of steel balls and keeps on playing. As the steel balls pile up in the disc, Peter's heart starts racing with excitement. With everyone cheering him on, the steel ball breaks through the force and drops down below. Boom! Peter successfully snatches that juicy 10 billion. There's a fat stack of 100 million, just snatching the calculator atop the tower. The whole amount is yours. Those who dream of overnight riches rush headlong towards it, only to be pulled down by others below. Peter, however, has a cunning plan, balancing on the steel bar. He takes a daring walk from above. But then, someone unexpectedly manipulates a drone to snatch the card. From below, people start launching attacks with slingshots and cans. The drone gets hit and plummets down. But people also notice Peter drawing closer to the card. Suddenly, the steel bar moves. Unbe announced to him. There's someone behind trying to thwart his progress. As the card is about to be snatched away, Peter takes a desperate gamble. But not only does he fail to grab the card, he ends up falling down. Fortunately, the calculator has a fingerprint authentication feature. Only the first person to touch it can use it. Peter emerges as the winner of the game, but he gives up the 100 million prize, opting instead for the reverse side of the card a single key. Peter arrives at an opulent mansion, using the card to unlock the door. Inside awaits a wealthy magnate who requests Peter's assistance in winning a game. Two wealthiest folks in all of Japan stand on a scale. They're in for a game not a battle of riches, the rules are simple, they convert their entire fortunes into gold bars, ready for the ultimate way off. Whoever tips the scale gains the other's wealth, while the loser goes bankruptcy. At the start, the dark-haired man unleashes a staggering 40 billion in gold, followed by the silver-haired grandpa, bringing out an impressive 60 billion. Sure, the odds seem stacked, but they have three opportunities to seek outside help. Just when things start heating up, the woman who married the dark-haired man three days ago appears. She is the daughter of a prominent business magnate, swinging in with a jaw-dropping 10 billion in gold. Next come friends. Quickly, his assets surpass the grandpa's. The crowd is on the edge of their seats, their bets hanging in the balance. But the silver-haired grandpa isn't one to be 
outdone. His brother brings forth the ownership of a vast 3,000 square meter land. However, the land's appraisal delivers a devastating blow, reducing its worth to a mere gold bar. All because, the land was transformed into a trash dump overnight. The dark-haired man's mischievous hand at play, leaving the grandpa with a bitter taste of defeat. There's no other choice. Peter can only participate in another game, using a starting capital of 1 billion to win 10 billion. Hundreds of meters above ground, 10 daredevils are gearing up for a bungee jump, but behind them hangs a single real safety cord. The rest are all death traps in disguise. It's a game of life and death. Only one in ten will live to tell the tale. The question is how to choose the right cord. Little did they know, the organizers had a sinister plan. From their secret control room, they had full control, able to manipulate the safety cord at their whim. No matter which cord they pick, it's a losing game. But fear not, Peter had a trick up his sleeve. He dispatched a comrade to cut the power in the control room, disabling them to tamper with the cords. Meanwhile, another teammate, Watson, rummaged through the trash bins, finding discarded tickets from a previous round. The missing number on those tickets is the right code to survival. With the clock ticking, Watson raced to the scene, but the distance was too long. Peter could only identify number 9 out of 10 from her mouth. He chose the wrong number 10, but at the last moment, he saw Watson's hand signal and switched to number 9, successfully saving his own life. Two wealthiest folks in all of Japan stand on a scale. They're in for a game, a battle of riches. Peter, with his hard-earned 100 billion, manipulates the drones, dropping gold bars. The crowd joins in, tossing coins as their bets flow. The assets on both sides reach a stalemate. Then comes the moment. They step on the scale. The result shows the black-haired man's side, slightly heavier. Did Peter truly lose the game? As the clock ticks on, a cascade of coins descends like rain. The scale teeters and sways once again, but it falls just a little short of tipping in his favor. Sudden Suddenly, another coin drops, Peter's weight surpasses, he prevails, and the last straw that makes the black-haired man's spirit quail, is none other than that half-coin. Once disdained, with farewells to Watson, there are two remaining boxes. Watson lets Peter take the first pick, without hesitation, he chooses the large. Quick, but what lies inside? Peter finds himself back at the starting point of a penniless life.